What is your name, please? My name is Philip Langlois. What is your name, please? My name is Philip Langlois. What is your name, please? My name is Philip Langlois. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Philip Langlois and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome once again to our little game of deliberate misrepresentation wherein our panel endeavors to figure out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. To tell the truth is brought to you each week by Geritol, America's number one tonic, the high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger fast. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Ralph Bellamy. My name is Kitty Carlisle. And my name is High Gardner. Now, these three gentlemen all claim to be Philip Langlois. Only one is the real Philip Langlois. The other two have assumed that identity, and of course, they do not have to stick to the truth. Our panel in front of you, you'll find copies of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read? I, Philip Langlois, work in Montreal for the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I was formerly a sound effects man in radio, but am now a television technician. On November 23rd, I will marry Cécile Dion, one of Canada's famed Dion quintuplets. Signed, Philip Langlois. Now, panel, remember these three gentlemen all claim to be Philip Langlois, TV technician and fiancé of Cécile Dion. Only the real Philip Langlois is required to answer your questions truthfully. Will you each question as usual until you hear this signal? And at the end of the questioning period, you will be required to cast your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real Philip Langlois. And we'll start with Ralph Bellamy tonight. Ralph? Uh, number one, uh, do you know the names of uh, any one of uh, or? more of a group of men who own uh, privately owned stations in Canada with headquarters in Toronto? No, I don't. Number two to you? No, I don't. Number three to you? No, I don't. Well, number one, uh, what's an echo chamber? Paper? What's an echo chamber? It's made the special effect for... Uh, you mean how it, it's uh, done? Or? Number two, can you answer that? No, I don't know. Number I don't three, know. what's an echo chamber? It's the... When you send a sound through, uh, well, it's sort of this way, an echo chamber, and then feed it back to the transmitter. Gives you a... Uh, Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> Number one, do you know the name of the quintuplet's elder sister? They are all the same... Uh, huh? They are all the same age. No, uh, he misunderstood you. Uh, do you know the name of the quintuplet's elder sister? Not, not... No, not they, 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 um, no I don't know... Uh, no. Uh, number two, do you know? Rosemary. Rosemary, where does she live? She lives in Calendar, Ontario. In Ontario. Number three, were you at the wedding of the quintuplet that just got married? Yes, I was. Do you know the color of the suits that were worn by the groom and the bride? Uh, it was sort of a brown. It was a brown. Are you bilingual? Do you speak French and, and, uh, and English? Yes, a little. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number one, you are going to get married on November 23rd. Now, a groom looks forward to a marriage. Uh, on what day does the 23rd fall? It's uh, Saturday. Saturday. Uh, number three, what day does the 23rd fall? I beg your pardon? On what day does the 23rd of November fall? What day of the week? I wouldn't know now. Uh, number number uh, three, what are the two great newspapers in Montreal? Uh, Montreal Press and... Um the one that is called Le Petit Journal. Mm -hmm. Number two, what is the flying time between Montreal and New York? Uh, it's about two hours and uh, five minutes. Uh, also, number two, what is the name of the famous Chinese restaurant, uh, oh, just about a mile from the uh, airport in Montreal? That's uh, Ruby Foo's. Uh, number, uh, number one, uh, Ruby Foo. What the... <laughs> Polly, <laughs> take us to dinner, will you? Uh, number two, what is the name of one of the television programs you work on? Uh, Chacun son métier. What was that again? Chacun son métier. 
Yeah, it sounds wonderful. Uh, what, what, what does it mean? Uh, what's my line? What? <laughs> That. Uh, what do you call to tell the truth? Uh, pour dire la vérité. Ah. Phew. Number three, uh, could you tell me what is the name of one of the theaters in Montreal that used to, to uh, have vaudeville? Number one, do you know? Gaiety. Gaiety. I didn't hear his answer. Gaiety Theater. The Gaiety, he called it. Oh. That's all we have time for. It's time to vote, panel, so without consultation, will you mark your ballots and select by so doing number one. Number two, or number three. Remember, please, the team of challengers receives $250 for each and every incorrect vote. Polly, you all set, or are you still thinking? Oh, no, I'm not at all set, I mean. You're not all set, I see. But you are thinking. I don't remember some of the quits. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Too late now, so I, let's I go. I have to guess somebody, don't I? Yes, you do. I see. Hurry up. Uh, Why don't we play it back? Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. Right, I throw Frank you the always curve. rush me, and I never get it right. All right, now what have you got this time? <laughs> number two. Number two. Uh -huh. It is. The audience says you. you're right. Well, I thought it was number three because he knew a couple, but then when he didn't know what day his wedding day was, I got a little confused. He's and never. The one who didn't know anything knew what day his wedding day was on. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't know the name of the elder sister, which number two knew, so I voted for you. <laughs> All right, Ralph. How about you? Number three. You're right. Number one knew the day of the week of his wedding, but number three is the only one who knew about an echo chamber. It seemed to me that... Kitty, how about your vote? Number three. Well, I was struck by reading in the paper that the bride and groom both wore brown suits cut from the same bolt, and he knew about that. Also the echo chamber. Many things. All right, hi. What's your vote, hi? I thought it was three because he pronounced his name Philippe. Uh, but I voted for number one. Ruby Foos was right. Number three did not know the name of the two papers in Montreal, the Star and the Gazette, so he had to be eliminated in my mind oh, anyway. Dear. And so that's about it. He also knew the day of the wedding. Number one. Well, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. You see how sound our reasoning is. <laughs> we go clearly right to the point every time. And with that having been established, let's find out now which one of these gentlemen is the television technician in Canada, and the fiancé of Cécile Dion. Will the real Philip Langlois please stand up? Thank you very much. Number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Camille Henry, and I play professional hockey for the New York Rangers. <laughs> and number three, how about you? My name is Victor Dion, and on November 23rd, I will be his brother-in-law. <laughs> Victor is, I believe, the youngest brother of the Dion's. Is that right? No, there's another one after me. Oh, there's another one after yes. you. All right. Well, you're next to the last then. Let's see now. We had one, two, three incorrect votes at uh, $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Congratulations, gentlemen. I hope you had a good time. We did. Good night and good luck to you. <laughs> and now may we meet our next group of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Kathy Whiteside. What is your name, please? My name is Kathy Whiteside. What is your name, please? My name is Kathy Whiteside. Once again, panel, may I direct your attention to your copies of this affidavit while I read it. I, Kathy Whiteside, have been riding horses since I was six years old. Since then, I have won more than 200 blue ribbons and 27 junior championships, including the National Professional Horseman's Trophy and the Governor's Cups in both Connecticut and New Jersey. Next week at the National Horse Show in Madison Square Garden, New York, I will compete for the first time against some of the top adult riders in the nation. Signed, Kathy Whiteside. All right, panel, these three young ladies all claim to be Kathy Whiteside, as you heard, one of the nation's leading junior horsewomen. 
Remember again that only the real Kathy Whiteside is required to answer your questions truthfully. We'll begin this round with High Gardner. Hi. Number one, uh, Trader Horn was a past winner. Would you know who the owner of Trader Horn? No, I don't. Would you, number two? Yes. Would you, number three? No, I don't. Uh, number one, what is the difference between a Western, an English, and an Australian saddle? A Western saddle has a horn in the front. An English saddle does not have a horn. And I don't know the Australian saddle. In other words, the Western has the horn. That's, yes. the, that's the noisy one. Much easier uh, to ride, yes, with that. <laughs> uh, number, number two, uh, you won cups in Connecticut and New, in New Jersey. Where did you win these cups? Well, in Connecticut, in Avon, and in New Jersey, uh, Hartsdale. At Hartsdale. Number three, uh, what is the most colorful team competing in this year's uh, horse show? I think it's Mexico. What would you say, number two? The uh, Arabian. What would... Polly Bergen. Uh, number two, it says here that you won 200 or rather more than 200 blue ribbons. Uh, who actually wins the ribbon, you or the horse? Well, sometimes the horse and sometimes I do. Oh, they actually split it up like that. Well, it depends. <laughs> no, I mean, I always wondered who, who actually got it. Well, sometimes they're judging the horse, sometimes they're judging the rider. Oh, I see. Uh, number one, could you tell me, uh, are you a hunter? No, I'm not. You're not. Well, how do you keep from going up when the horse goes down and meeting in the middle? <laughs> That's called posting. What? That's called posting. Oh. Maybe that's what I didn't learn. <laughs> uh, number three, uh, do you ride Western saddle at all? I have. Do you feel that it spoils your form for English no. saddle? Number two. Knocks the dickens out of the horses, though. How about you, Ralph? Uh, number one, what does the term high school mean with reference to horses? Pardon me? What does the term high school mean with reference to horses? I don't number know. Number two, you know? Yeah. Number three. No, I don't. Uh, number one, uh, where are um, Percheron horses famous? I don't know. Number two. I don't number three. In the circus. Where? In the circus. Well, I meant really. Where, where do they oh. come from? Uh, oh, where? No, no. I don't know. Well, number one, where where are Shire horses famous? I don't know. Do you know either. number two? Well, Shire horses are the uh, father horses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Ralph. <laughs> I'm sorry, one. but you just have to speak a little more clearly. <laughs> Number one, how many gates can a horse acquire? Some horses have three gates and some have five gates. Kitty? Number one, what are withers? <laughs> Withers are uh, right between the shoulders. And number two, what is spavined? I don't know. Number three, uh, what's the snaffle? The snaffle is part of the bridle. Part of the bridle? Yeah. Number one, does a horse know when you're afraid of it, really, or is that an old wives' tale? I think the horse does know. Does it know, number two, by the smell? Well, the horse senses it. But not by the smell of the human being. No, I don't think so. It's nicer to say the horse senses it. Well, that's it. a good thing. I'm sorry, but I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all gone. <laughs> no consultation. Would you please mark your ballots and select number one, number two, or number three? Hey, you're already waiting for me this time, huh, Polly? It's a very bad sign. Well, who is it for this time? I voted for number three. Uh, actually, uh... I really was for number one all the way through until Kitty asked about a snaffle or whatever it was she asked about. Mm -hmm. And was what she said right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the reason why I voted for her. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know until now whether it was right, but that's the... Yeah, all right. Ralph, what was your vote? Number three. I had to eliminate number two on my enunciation, and uh, <laughs> they all seem to know an awful lot, though. This is just a hunch, really, number three. Uh -huh. Kitty? I voted for number one. Oh, I'd be ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why. I knew what a snaffle was, but I didn't know what withers were, and number one seemed so sure that it was up here, so I believed it. <laughs> all right, hi. Uh, I uh, went for number one, too. I think mostly because at least once a year, I uh, put my two bucks on the derby. Oh. <laughs> I know, I'm 
Well, all right. Let's just skip the reasons and the votes and find out right away which one of these young ladies is the real leading junior horsewoman. Will the real Kathy Whiteside please stand up? <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. Number one, would you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is Carol Hulick, and I'm a freshman at Richfield Park High School in New Jersey. And number two, how about you? My name is Frances Unger, and I'm a senior at Rhodes School in New York. You must admit they're as eye-catching a bunch of young teenagers as you've ever seen, and certainly it was nice to have you here. And you'll be interested to know, I'm sure, that there were exactly two incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $500 for you to divide. Thank you very much. It's from Jared Hall with our compliments. Good night and good luck. <laughs> now let's have our third team of challengers, please. What is your name, please? My name is Frances G. Knight. What is your name, please? My name is Frances G. Knight. What is your name, please? My name is Frances G. Knight. All right, panel, once again, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Frances G. Knight, hold a top position with the United States State Department. Formerly, I was with the NRA, the WPA, and the USIA in various executive capacities. In May 1955, Secretary of State Dulles appointed me to the post I currently hold, Director of the Passport Office of the Department of State. Signed, Francis G. Knight. <laughs> Ladies, all claim to be, as you heard, Francis G. Knight, Director of the Passport Office of the Department of State. Once again, will you question until you hear the signal? We'll begin this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Number one, uh, can a person own an American passport and also a passport from a foreign country at the same time? No, I don't think so. Number two, what do you think? What? I think there are certain circumstances. That... No, no, I don't think they can. Number three, what do you think? No. No. Uh, number one, could you tell me how much does a passport cost? Ten dollars. Nine dollars no. uh, exact fee and one certain dollar service charge. Oh, I see. Uh, can a child get in for half fare? No. no. <laughs> Number two, if it's a family, do they all have one passport or does each person have an individual passport? Well, they may have uh, uh, all one passport or they may have individual passports. I see. Number three, could you tell me, are there any countries where you don't need a passport to get in? Yes, where there, I wouldn't, like There say. are quite a number of countries in the uh, Western Hemisphere that do not need uh, passports. Ralph Bellamy. Uh, number one, um, who's the new head of the USIA and who did he replace? Uh, the head of the USIA is uh, Atkinson, and um, I don't know who you're Number two, can you answer that? George Allen is the new head of the, uh, and I think it's the USIS, isn't it? Well, who did he replace? Um, he replaced, um, oh, I forgot. Number three, would you know? I believe he replaced Arthur Lawson. Um, number one, how many passport offices are there in the United States? Uh, well, there are six in the major cities. There's Boston. You want me to name them? No, I won't have time to name them all, Kitty. <laughs> number one, what was your predecessor's name? Um, her name was Sally Shipley. Sally Shipley? Mm -hmm. uh, number two, can you tell me if the American passport is made on special paper? Yes, it is. And do you know where this paper is made? No, oh, I don't know where, it, where the paper comes from. Number three, what is the color of the current American passport? The cover of it? The color. The color of the cover? Uh-huh. It's green. It's green. Mm -hmm. 
Number one, how long can an American citizen stay away from America without having his passport stamped in the foreign country he's residing in? Uh, four years. And then he has to go to the consulate? Yes. You, well, you have two years. You have to have it renewed, but four years you have to have a new passport uh -huh. issued. Number two, who was the head of... High guard. Num <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kitty. Number, number three, who was your predecessor? <laughs> Um, Mrs. Uh, Ruth Shipley. Uh -huh. Number two, who was your predecessor? Mrs. Ruth Shipley. I guess Mrs. Shipley was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, number uh, uh, one, uh, what was the emblem of uh, the NRA? A blue eagle. Uh, number three, for what duration are diplomatic passports issued? For the duration of the mission for which they are issued. Uh, what, is the, what is the cost, number three, of renewing your passport? Five dollars. Uh, number two, why is it that all passport photographs look like the person that is being issued to needs a vacation? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we're trying to change that now, and, and because there's no real reason why you shouldn't smile. The main thing is that the passport be on the proper kind of paper, and that it be the proper size and full face. How long ago, was that, how long ago that. was that regulation issued? Do you know? Uh, Too long ago for us to take time to figure it out. I'm sorry to say, because our time is gone. Hi. And it's time to vote once again, panel. So without consultation, will you mark your ballots and vote thereby for number one, number two, or number three? Holly, you amaze me. Already way ahead of time? Who'd you vote for? I voted for number two. Uh, actually, I voted for number two because when I asked if you could hold more than one passport, she said yes. She changed her mind, but she said yes. The other two said no, and I, I know that you can hold a passport, both an American one and a one from a foreign country. So Thank she you. was half right. Thank you, Mrs. Shipley. <laughs> uh, Ralph, your vote. <laughs> number one. I haven't got too much of a reason, as you just seem to be a little quicker with some information, and uh, particularly about the old NRA. You do that eagle very quickly. Kitty, how about yours? I voted for number three, because she knew Mrs. Shipley's name. I don't think it was Sally. <laughs> and hi, Gardner, your selection? Well, I voted for number two. Uh, I think all the young ladies had the answer, but she was so tired of looking at these passport photographs that she was smiling from the time she stood up there and came all the way down. All right, let's see if we can make you smile now, as we hope you have throughout this entire show, as we find out which one of these ladies is the real director of the passport office. Will the real Francis G. Knight please stand up? Uh. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Knight. Hold your questions for just a second and we find out about the others. Number one, how about you? My name is Nan Comstock, and I am editor-in-chief of the McCall's Needlework and Crafts Publications. <laughs> and number two, would you tell us who you are? My name is Julia A. Wilson, and I'm at the moment a freelance writer specializing in business and investment subjects. And a quick question, Polly, because we don't have much time. Yes, I, I only wanted to ask her uh, that I was surprised that she gave me the no answer on the, on the double passport. Well, let her explain it afterward, would you, All because right, we're a little short on time. And I do want to check up and, and see that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Thank you very much, ladies. Good night and good luck. <laughs> uh, we'll return to our panel in just... Our program is brought to you, as you know, I'm sure, by Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that Holly is saying good night and reminding you to tell the truth. Night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Cogman production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Bergen's and Miss Carlisle's gowns by Molly Parnas. Riding attire courtesy of Miller's Riding Shop. <laughs>